One day, on the afternoon of Saturday, November 15, 1884, an international conference was opened by the Chancellor of the newly created German Empire at his official residence on Wilhelmstrasse, in Berlin. A group of men sat to decide how they would divide, rule and plunder. They sat around a horseshoe-shaped table in a room overlooking the garden, with representatives from every European country, save Switzerland, as well as those from the United States and the Ottoman Empire. These European leaders gathered around the table and hung a large map of Africa on the wall to divide the land, its people and its natural resources amongst themselves. Till today, Africans are experiencing the effects of this conference. At the Berlin Conference, the Europeans established the rules for the conquest and partition of Africa. See, they laid down rules of the lands each of them would get to rule over and plunder. They legitimized Africa as a playground for outsiders, meaning the Europeans, its mineral wealth as a resource for the outside world not for Africans and its fate as a matter not to be left to Africans. Although, the colonial period in Nigeria really began in the 15th century. What drove Europe to colonize Africa? To define colonialism, this is the direct and overall domination of one country by another on the basis of state power being in the hands of a foreign power, like the direct and general domination of Nigeria by Britain between 1900 to 1960. The first objective of colonialism is the desire of the colonizer to gain political domination over the land and people colonized. The second objective is to make it possible to exploit the people and natural resources of the colonized land. Talk of colonialism in Africa, we are talking of a phenomenon that took place between 1800 to 1960s. It is a brutal phenomenon that is part and parcel of another brutal phenomenon called imperialism. In fact, colonialism is a direct form of imperialism. This is why it is often said that all colonialism is imperialism, but not all imperialism is colonialism. Colonialism began as a result of changes in the mode of production in Europe for example, the emergence of what they call the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution brought in a new process of production to replace the earlier slave-based economy of the Western world. The Industrial Revolution was a revolutionary trend in the history of mankind. They had a problem, though, how to lubricate the machinery associated with the emergence of the Industrial Revolution. The slave trade and slavery have by this time fulfilled their primary function of providing primitive capital, that is, the gains gotten by enslaving Africans. Europe needed to invest the accumulated capital from slavery. Also, they needed raw materials to fuel the Industrial Revolution. These are the primary reasons Europe invaded and colonized Africa. To take the case of Nigeria. British colonialism began under the pretense of policing the slave trade. Britain outlawed slavery in 1807 and pushed for forms of quote legitimate commerce end quote, such as palm oil and cotton. They put in place an internal infrastructure to enable them buy and sell these goods. By the 1820s, the British had made connections with the Sokoto Caliphate. To the colonial administrators, they were more quote, civilized end quote, than the other tribes they encountered in the south, who were more warlike, and less willing to accept the colonization of their land and people. With the discovery of quinine, the anti-malaria, in the 1850s, 
Colonia explorers and missionaries who had been unable to enter the southern interior due to risk of malaria began contacting a wider range of groups. The British then had treaties and trade policies in place throughout the north and the south. The British had a hard time keeping control of Nigeria, partly due to the trouble between groups and partly due to Pan-Africanism and the struggle to liberate black people from racism and European domination. The movement inspired the first political party of Nigeria, which fought against the British rule via the youth, the media, the educated, and the farmers. The response of the British included slowly changing the governing system within Nigeria in order to allow the Nigerian people to have more of a voice. However, this resulted in further divisions and disagreements among Nigerians. Near the mid-20th century, many groups in Nigeria were fearful of gaining independence, for they knew the major ethnic groups would gain control of the new country. However, by 1960, Nigeria succeeded in its fight to liberate the land from and self-govern themselves and the natural resources found within its borders. Since 1960, Nigeria has been beset by problems, many of which stem from the way the land and people were ruled over. The British colonialists ruled through imperial companies. It can be argued that the British colonists did not conceive of or organize Nigeria as a nation. Rather it was administered as a business enterprise in which the crown depended on companies to govern its Nigerian colonies. The most prominent of these companies was the Royal Niger Company, which succeeded the United Africa Company in 1886. My great-grandmother used to talk about UAC to me, it was based mainly in southern Nigeria, but expanded to the northern territories. The company traded in tropical foods and industrial goods, and it established both commercial and governing rights over the territories of the Niger area. It also built a military force to ensure its survival and control of the area. The fact that the colonial system in what was to become Nigeria, as elsewhere, was essentially a commercial expedition meant that the outcome was the creation of corporate entities rather than nation states. Consequently, the Nigeria of today is more or less an industrial project rather than a community of people with legitimate rights to determine their own local affairs. Basically, the Nigerian people and their land were imagined not as people with rights to exist and function as a community or even nations. They were imagined as corporate money-making entities whose bodies were enslaved and lands plundered. Before the arrival of the British, so-called Nigerians had belonged to thriving indigenous tribes, including the Kingdom of Benin, Oyo Empire, Great Zimbabwe, Kingdom of Oxum, to name a few. From the slavery and colonial eras, several foundational blocks have been in place, to name some, the system of divide and rule, which pitted tribes against tribes, used by the British to conquer and rule, the creation and administration of Nigeria based on corporate entities, rather than nation states, the destruction of existing systems of law, governance, and societal structures. All created a problem of unification in the post-British era. This problem persists till today. <laughs>